All right, so I'm gonna talk about the water signs. So I have a video I'll link it below about the earth signs. And what I'm basically doing is breaking down the similarities and what's different. Now, I might have a video similar to this where I talk about the spirituality, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> it might have been a long time ago. So, you know, I want to discuss the differences. I feel like a lot of times we certainly, it makes sense to bucket elements together. You know, the water signs, we're dealing with the emotions or feeling and things of that nature. Air sign, we're dealing with ideas. And fire, we're dealing with direction or passion or action um, and expression. And, you know, earth, we're dealing with, you know, planning and order and organization and um, building things and sustainability and things of that nature. And so every element is important. The problem is, we're going to look at the fact that there's a little bit of nuance when you get to certain elements. So with water, water signs, there is an emotional reaction. There is an emotional reaction. Each water sign is going to react differently and express differently, but there is an emotional core, an emotional center. And so these individuals go by feeling. So your facts might not mean everything to them. You know, telling people, here's the plan, might not work for them. Um, telling a water sign we're gonna do this because this is this is this is so great this is amazing that might not work for them either because they need to feel out or feel that it is aligned to them and what they want and what they feel is more comfortable now you would have more buy-in from certain water signs you know you might have more buy-in originally from Pisces to change things or do different things because Pisces is mutable um, so you might feel like there might be this less, there's less boundaries with Pisces. So it might be like, yeah, okay, cool, let's try that, let's do it, I don't know, let's go, All right. Now, depending on other placements as well. So I just want to share just some things, some insights I have about the different signs. Okay, so as we know, both are, all are dealing with water. Um, now, all, the, all these water signs are dealing with emotion or feeling in some sense, sensitivity, things of that nature. Now, you can say... You do want to look at water placements when we're talking about anything dealing with spirituality, psychic abilities, and things of that nature. Because we cannot see it. So that means I can't see your feelings. I can't see your feelings, right? Um, I can't hear your feelings, right? So this is where they're different than the other elements. There, there's a sense there. And all of us have some water placement or we can make observations of your water placement. So let's say you have no water placements in your chart, which would be rare to have none. But let's say you don't, which is possible. Well, we could still look at what sign is on the cusp of your fourth house, your eighth house, and your twelfth house. And so let's say you have Leo on the cusp of your fourth house. Okay, well now we can look at the fact that this, you know, we can interpret what that could mean for you, but we also can look at the fact that, okay, the sun rules Leo, let's see where the sun is in your chart. Maybe that somehow influences your fourth house as well, right? Making those connections throughout the whole chart is possible. And so, um, let's, I'm just going to start with the sign. So Cancer is cardinal, and so because it's cardinal, you see it, you feel it. Um, cancer cannot hide what they feel, um, and, and again, a lot of them have a, um, an emotional power, Meaning that they can think they're hiding something from you, but they're not. And they're not really good at hiding. That's Scorpio. Scorpio might be a better. And Pisces is good at evading, right? But it's because Cancer has such a molding, such a power to really, truly make us feel cared for. And so that is the benefit to the Cancer energy is I'm going to care for you. Now, again. Cancer is linked to Capricorn's opposite sign, so we're dealing with responsibility here. So Cancer is not Pisces, where Pisces feels more obligation to the rest of the world, or is more humanitarian. But cancer is at the home. We're dealing with the home base. Who we have true, who's our family? Who do we view as family? Who is our family? So with Cancer energy, it's cardinal. I'm going to take care of you. Um, cancers can be really good with knowing what you need in an emotional way. Oh, how are you feeling? Are you not feeling too good? Oh, you know, I know you're not feeling good. The other day are you okay that is a cancer energy it is an extreme emotional intelligence and ability to connect and I don't think it only extends to people they care about I don't want to say it like that um, but it's a different type of energy because cancer has to do with their surroundings their emotional um, responses to their environment that's why cancer is linked to the home and so there is a need for cancer individuals to feel that they are in their comfort zone. They are comfortable. They are familiar. 
it is what belong you know where they belong you know um in contrast to scorpio where scorpio has mars and pluto and mars is about direction action and pluto can deal with transformation so of course scorpio is going to feel more comfortable in situations that where they have to show their power or where they have to gain control over something scorpio feels more comfortable scorpio feels more comfortable in chaos i'll explain that in a moment you know um and, and i think the difference with cancer is now we're dealing with this kind of emotional loyalty to who they belong to like their family or people that are around them um you know sometimes being too um it, now here's the thing cancer's intuitive abilities are because cancer is related to the fourth house the fourth house so when i say intuition if i say um intuition and a scorpio's transformation right probing deep and pisces is spiritual so that's how i would bucket that Cancer being intuitive because cancer is linked to the home and it's linked to this kind of energy of kind of just knowing, just sensing. It's almost symbolic, symbolically like your mother. Your mother just knows. Your mother might know things about you or sense things about you intuitively on a different level. And that connection. So cancer's abilities can be quite intuitive um, because cancer is allowing itself to just center. Now, you can have people who deny their own emotions and that can be dangerous because you're now blocking your intuition and you're now only gonna look at emotions with a negative lens. Um, you know, cancers can do well in caretaking or and it doesn't have to mean just caretaking. I think that we can oversimplify that. They can in general. But I think another thing about cancers, um, in any capacity, in any role where they are able to gauge the emotions of others, gauge what other people need, in any capacity where you're able to gauge what people need and how to support them, you likely will be really good, you know, at that. Now, again, I can talk more about Cancer Midheavens and things like that, but I'm not going to depth it there. Scorpio. Now, again, I have a whole video on Cancer. I have a whole video on Scorpio. I have a whole video on Pisces. Um, but I kind of just want to link them together, this one, and talk about how they're different. So, Scorpio deals with transformation. Now, Scorpio is more loyal to what it has decided i say a lot that scorpio makes decisions emotionally cancer it, it, it's automatic cancer it's an automatic and i have venus in cancer so i can somewhat understand the energy um i have moon in the fourth house and venus in cancer so though not always outwardly emotional i understand the motivation behind the cancer energy i get it um it's it's like when you when you have cardinal energy, cancer, it has to go somewhere. The, the motion has to go somewhere. I say a lot that cancer is rain. Cancer is rain. Raindrops. It's flowing. You see it. You know something's about to go down with cancer, right? And sometimes for good reason. I don't want to negate that emotions sometimes need to be released. You know, you, society talks about emotions only through the negative because they're associated with women. Even though everybody has emotions, anybody can be logical. Yes, you can have certain tendency based on how you were raised or just other aspects. And yes, you can have, you can, you can make the argument that, you know, there are certain reasons why different people are different or like gender based and things like that. You can definitely make that argument. That's a whole different conversation. My point is, though, that society only talks about emotions in a negative way. And we're just now getting to the point where people are more open about therapy and not holding in what you feel and that men and women should open up themselves more you know what I mean like we're just now in a society in a way having that conversation more so society tells you emotions are bad because women have them and you know that's the that's the thing right um but it's like that feeling whatever that core feeling is that cancer has and it centers from cancer right that feeling that's the stuff that you can use to make decisions if you are intuitive if you are in tune with the information you're receiving you can use your intuition to make really good decisions. So it's not a bad thing. You just have to know how to use it. And so with Scorpio, though, it's more about transforming their emotions, which is why Scorpio picks and chooses who they care about. It is a very different energy than Cancer. Whereas Cancer is going to, at the source, care about their family, even if their family's a mess, even if their family don't mean good for them. They don't, they, there's this, that's my family, man, that's my family, right? Or they might talk about them, but they're still going to go back and help them. Because they care about where they come from. That's the fourth house. That's cancer. Where you come from. Who made you. Where you, you know who your people are. Scorpio was different. Where Scorpio is now choosing. <laughs> because if you think about the planets of Mars and Pluto, we're now dealing with mo we're doing some. It's outward now. Well, Pluto was more about control and and like trying to consume. 
and Mars is about action. But we put it together and now we're dealing with the fact that Scorpio can make decisions of who they love and who they care about. And you trying to tell them what to care about, you trying to tell them what matters doesn't really work for Scorpio. You're better off finding Scorpio where they are and then helping them see how what you're saying can help with their what they're trying to do. You know? And so there's a fixed sign there. Okay? It's a fixed sign. With cancer, maybe you just make them feel comfortable. You prepare them. You make sure the environment looks good. All right, yeah, we're gonna go to this new place, but cancer, like, look, it's like, let me show the cancer what it looks like, because they can feel more comfortable. It's more their vibe. I don't know. Scorpio is fixed. And so fixed energies, fixed signs, everything kind of, they want to mold, they want everything to kind of build around them. You know, um, you know, cardinal is direction and um, fix is like, I'm right here. Y'all going to sit around me. It's like somebody sitting in the center of a circle. All right, guys, come around. That's fixed energy. So with Scorpio's emotions, it is an incredible amount of intensity. And I think that is partly why Scorpio does not easily give and why there's a reaction to not wanting to be vulnerable. Because it's about, I need to trust this situation because I'm about to get really intense if I'm Scorpio energy. I'm about to get really intense, but I need to trust it because Scorpio doesn't like to feel powerless. And, and that's what we have to understand. They don't like to feel powerless. And when they feel that they don't have weaponry or psychological weaponry, you know, understand, um, Mars is the planet of war, right? And so Mars is more of that war aspect or that dominance and that aggression in Aries, you could say. But with Scorpio, it's more of a psychological base because Mars and Pluto are ruling that Scorpio energy. And so with Scorpio, it, 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 it costs them more. You know, where cancer can be like sacrificing for their family or their child or something like that and say, but yeah, but I care about them. I care about them. With Scorpio, it feels like a betrayal of themselves if they become too vulnerable and they don't gain anything because the Scorpio is about gain. It is. Scorpio is about consuming, gaining. That's why when you go to the eighth house, which is related to the Scorpio energy, when you go to the eighth house, um, joining with others, joint assets. Why is that there? Why is intimacy there? All that stuff in the 8th house is about getting from other people and making it your own power, right? Nothing wrong with that, but that's what the 8th house is about. It's, it's the resources that others have and you're able to get from that, benefit from that, join with them. Intimacy, then if you talk about physical intimacy, the 8th house, right? I'm joining with you is what the 8th house is about. Now, we can definitely say, I sometimes say personal power as well. The willpower can be in the 8th house as well, but in general, we're talking about joining with others. All right. So um, with that said, that is where you'll see the differences between Scorpio and Cancer energy. Now, if you have it in your chart, if you have both, if you have all the water signs in your chart, you have experienced all of this on some level. Um, but I think Scorpio's loyalty to themselves is something that you can definitely see as a strength. You know, this loyalty to I have committed to this. This is what I'm doing. And it's it's really not it's about their own emotional sense of security. And it's based on what they have decided makes the most sense for them. And that is what you're going to typically get from the Scorpio. And it's positive when they are committed to you or when they are committed to a cause, right? Because they're not going to easily bend and they're not going to change direction. Unlike sometimes, I'm going to say, and again, there's nothing wrong with cancer. Um, I have Venus in cancer. I know plenty of cancer folks. Um, sometimes with cancer, it can immobilize you because you're cardinal. So as the first sign of the zodiac, the first sign of any element, the first signs, there's a realness there and that's respected, that realness, but it's also not the most complex version of that sign. So cardinal, so cancer being the first sign of the zodiac is super important because that's where we come from, right? Symbolically, cancer is, is important. Everything's important. But what I'm saying is that can overtake you. That emotion can overtake you and you, you stop in your tracks if you're too into the emotional aspect and you can't translate it to anything, which can sometimes happen. With Scorpio, you get the problem with not knowing when to listen to that inner emotion because at least Cancer can say, well, something's wrong. Something's wrong. I don't like that. Wait, wait, wait. I feel uncomfortable. Scorpio might be like, well, I can't show that I'm uncomfortable. I can't show that. I can't show that. I'm going to go to them. So it it really depends on being aware of when you do have to sometimes soften that up a little bit and allow something else in because you're only going to trust what you've decided to trust. And though Scorpio can have really good gut instincts, you could also be clouded by fixed. I'm fixed. This is it. But 
if we're actually going to use our intuition and we're going to be able to kind of listen to ourselves, we have to be open to new information and open to new things. You see what I'm saying? And so sometimes that's where Scorpio, even as powerful as I feel like, as, as powerful as the energy can be, any energy can be powerful, but I think Scorpio is, look about what rules it, it's this internal power, but it's like you want to make sure that you're opening yourself up when you need to, or else you're going to be tied to old situations that might not always give you the growth that you want. Now, Pisces. So, Pisces is like, you know, I said Cancer is rain. And I say Scorpio is ice. You gotta melt that. You gotta melt. But when you melt it, you see it's water just like everybody else. It's a water sign. Pisces is a stream. It's that stream. You know, it's a puddle. Not in a, not the, not, not, not in a bad, like, not like an ugly puddle, but like that water just there that is going to stream down. Because it's just chilling. You've seen a puddle. Puddle's just there. It's like, I'm not in no rush. I'm not in a rush. Pisces is not in a rush to do anything. Um, now, what you can see sometimes is that Pisces energy, if someone has a really strong chart for uh, mobilizing, for action, Pisces can mean beautiful things, meaning you can activate your imagination and your dreams and what you want into reality. Pisces is the sign the least associated with reality. It is. And so, because it's the sign least associated with reality, it is the person that sometimes can appear to be in their own world. And you're going to see this, you know, because they're in their own world, they don't care as much about when they fit into other spaces. Here's what I mean. People can sometimes say, well, Pisces, you know, they're a chameleon. You, you know, they're like this with this group and like this with that group. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe. But the thing about that is... That's a, I mean, I think mutables can do that anyway. It doesn't mean they're changing. It means that they're adapting, you know. Um, some people are able to adapt to different groups of people. And it, Now, if you completely change your personality, that's a very different situation. But the thing about it is, is that mutable Pisces is not, not symbolically, Pisces is not of this world anyway. The 12th house, Neptune, is not of this world. We have to create conditions in our mind and bring them out into the world. So Pisces who have that, you know, they're always in their mind, um, kind of like Virgo, but the difference is imagination, not dealing with facts. Put that out into there. Because I bet you with every Pisces who's like that, there's so much behind the scenes that you could just draw out and get a bunch of inspiration. Because Pisces has seen, if you think of it symbolically, if it's the last time the Zodiac, symbolically, I'm not saying all individually like this. If you've seen everything there is to see, if you're the last sign of the Zodiac, of course you're not in a rush to do what all these other signs are doing. What are you worrying about ego for? You're worried about enlightenment. You're worried about spiritualism. Right? You you know, if you think about Pisces or 12th house energy, you, you, you didn't have a dream about parallel universe. You weren't worried about this reality stuff. But because of that, and I'm not saying every Pisces is into this, but what I'm saying is the symbolism of it. There's not a rush. There's not frantic, I have to do this, I have to do that. And so sometimes that can mean Pisces doesn't actualize in the, rea the, the rea real in the physical world. They might create their own inner world where they're happy, where they're content, where they're maybe even isolated to some degree. But the physical world is waiting for their, their gifts to be given out. And Pisces that lacks... Neptune is not about reality. Neptune is about imagination. Now, your imagination is limitless, right? So if your imagination is limitless, that means that, technically, um, Pisces doesn't have boundaries. It's not an earth sign. It's not a fixed sign. Cardinal would be moving. It's mutable water. Well, you can't contain water unless you put it in a container. So sometimes Pisces does need help with... Now, it doesn't mean they're not equipped. It just means symbolically that sign isn't about reality. There's creating. And because they can create, a lot of them can be very creative and bring things out into the forefront for us. Things we never even thought of because of a lot of other signs might lack imagination. So it's, it's everything is a trade-off here. Um, and as far as their emotions, sometimes Pisces can lack boundaries, meaning it's beautiful when you're compassionate. So like I said, I think Cancer has limitations, and I think that Scorpio has limitations to who they will love and who they'll give their emotions to. People assume water signs means you love everybody. No, you might be a little bit more open to talking about feelings with people, and people feel connected to you, right? Um, oh, what else I forgot to say about Scorpio? I'm sorry, I forgot to say about Scorpio. I'm sorry to pause. I'm just time stamping. Scorpio. Scorpio. Okay. Cancer is better at nurturing and supporting. 
Scorpio can be better with chaos. And here's what I mean, in conflict. Here's what I mean, because they're ruled by Mars and Pluto. Scorpio can be really good, and I've seen Scorpios do this, in situations of chaos, when other people are angry or mad, when there's something not quite working right, I've seen Scorpio do very good things to get that situation under control. It's almost like you, you would, they do something you would assume an earth sign might do. Scorpio is more comfortable with emotional, um, I wouldn't say comfortable, trauma or tragedy or things like that. I'm not, every, it, it's, it's bad for everyone, but Scorpio is better able to channel that and help other people get through those situations. So sometimes you can't see psychology or trauma related things related to the eighth house or Scorpio or Scorpio midheaven and things of that nature. I have seen Scorpio, Scorpio doesn't like chaos. But they like, they know how to fix it. They know how to stop that. They know, they're not, they're not like, oh, I'm not comfortable. Uh, cancer might be like, mm, that's not my, that's not my problem. And Scorpio might be like, oh, no, 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 what's going on here? And, and then it's this, and again, you can use other traits, right? So, of, of course, the individual, how they handle that situation might look different. But Scorpio of all the water signs is the most comfortable dealing with conflict and chaos because Mars is one of their rulers and Mars is war and they have strategy and Scorpio knows how to, you know, those situations. Now, the problem sometimes can be because they're comfortable with it, Scorpio can get into a lot of battles with other people sometimes, just like Aries. Um, and, and by battles, I mean, because you, the more comfortable you are with something, the more it doesn't bother you if it happens sometimes, right? So Scorpio sometimes can get involved in power struggles, especially with certain signs, especially with certain signs. Um, you know, Scorpio and their other fixed signs, Scorpio and Leo, sometimes, sometimes, not all of y'all, I don't want to make it sound bad. Because um, I've seen it work. I've seen it work where Scorpio and Leo get along very well. But I've also seen situations where there's a, a battle of the fixed signs, I guess you could say. Um, but what I'm saying is that because Scorpio was so strong with that, they don't see, they can get into battles and sometimes have to ask, is this worth the battle? Because they're so good and skilled and strategic with the way in which they fight and the way in which they calm things down and the way in which they deal with conflict. So that's one thing I'm going to mention about Scorpio. All right, back to Pisces. Sorry. All right. So Pisces, you know, um, compassion. This is the sign of like philanthropy, giving back. Um, seeing that life is more than just money and material things. Um, healing. Healers don't have conditions over who they heal. People who inspire others don't have conditions. Um, it's not like I'm only going to help these people. I'm only going to deal with these people. So because of that, Pisces has a very open-minded approach. Pisces has a very open to everyone type of mentality. That's where you can see the difference in what people might allow you to do. Cancer might say, yeah, my family can stay in my house. Yes, you can stay, you're my cousin. And Scorpio might be like, I don't like her. We haven't gotten along in 10 years. She's not come to stay at my house. But Scorpio might be letting some, let somebody else lay up in their house or stay in their house that they like because they choose. Scorpio chooses. Scorpio's intense and loyal, but they make decisions over who they loyal to. It's, it's a different type. They don't feel a sense of obligation unless they've chosen you. Chosen you. And Pisces might be like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you can. And I'm not, I'm not trying to stereotype. And I know some Pisces have boundaries. I'm not trying to judge. Or, but I'm giving. So I'm not talking about you as an individual. I'm talking about the energy of it. And if something deviates, it's because we have to look at your chart, right? Pisces be like, yeah, you can come stay. I haven't seen you in 10 years. But you can stay on my couch, you know. Da -da. Now, even if you wouldn't do something like that, it's about compassion. It's about everybody needs help sometimes. It's about this vision and idealism of let's be kind let's be nice it's a gentle energy pisces does not want to deal with conflict cancer um cancer will shield back when cancer doesn't want to do something it's going to just shut itself out shut, shut you out or shut the situation out okay cancer is like i'm going back to my comfort zone bye i'm going to my comfort zone um scorpio can they know how to cut it. I think they know how to cut situations off, but I also think Scorpio's not afraid to go into battle. Pisces can either, uh, let me make you think it's okay, or evade the situation because Neptune is not real. And Pisces can be here today and gone tomorrow because it's all about that mutable water energy flow. And if they feel inspired tomorrow about something, bye, they're going. And they might be like, where did they go? Ghosting? Ghosting, guys. 
I mean, I think Pisces can probably be really because it's and once something loses purpose, so it's similar to like Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is also mutable, and Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. In traditional astrology, Pisces is ruled by Jupiter. Modern astrology, we say Neptune, but we can still use this connection, right? So Sagittarius is about purpose and intention with everything. It's a message. It's direct. Like we we know with Sagittarius, there's a message, there's a purpose, there's something we can hold on to, because that's the hope. With Pisces, it's similar, but with Pisces, it's more like idealism. And once they've left, once something is no longer ideal for them, Pisces can leave the situation. Once it's no longer ideal, you, you know, sometimes you can see people who have rose colored glasses, especially like Venus and Pisces, rose colored glasses. Because you believe in idealism, and it's beautiful because you give people a chance. And everybody needs a chance in life, you know? And, and I, I don't, I, you know, from my experiences, I have very positive experiences with Pisces. I really, really do. Um, personally, I've had really good experiences with Pisces people, but I've seen some things as well from certain people. Um, but because Pisces works a lot in private, I think another thing sometimes is they can be really good. Like when they come out with what they've been doing, what they've been working on, you give Pisces time. So much of their opposite sign Virgo. Give them time. If you want them to do something well, give them time and it'll be well. It'll be done really well. You know, but Pisces can sometimes evade things that are, that are not part of their idealism. And sometimes it can lead to situations where they evade the truth or they are evasive, um, not direct, um, because it doesn't fit their vision. And they care about the vision, the present presentation. What does it look like? What does it feel like? They care about that. But it sometimes doesn't allow for the depth that you might see with Scorpio, right? Where this intensity, where Scorpio is also linked to resources and other people's resources as well. But because of that, Cancer and Scorpio are more in line with the, the actual physical world than Pisces. But the beauty with Pisces is possibility, is visionary, it's creativity in a way in which you create on your own. Think about that. The best creation, now we can all get inspiration from other people, I'm not saying you can't. Now you shouldn't be just copying them, but you can get inspiration from people, right? But you think about it, the best creations were when you left people alone. They didn't have, there wasn't, they, leave them alone. The best creations, the best thing, those musicians you hear about that were holed up in their um, their studios for like a week, two weeks straight. That's them by themselves isolating, producing something. And you guys love it. Because that's where we get uninfluenced creativity is through Pisces 12th house or Neptune energy. Wherever that is in your chart, that is what we're talking about. We're talking about that type of creativity. Now we could do the creativity, the Leo part, fifth, which is more presentation and more performance and things of that nature. You know, dealing with things that are already in a place. Musicians can definitely be um, playing an instrument or being in a performer would be more fifth house, sun energy. Um, creating a new sound no one ever heard before that, that makes everyone feel good and inspired and soothes you would be Pisces energy, 12th house stuff, right? So, you know, with Pisces, there is a need for sometimes boundaries, but again, I think sometimes it's the lack of boundaries that helps them be creative, right? So again, this was just more the symbolism behind the, you know, the water signs and how they're different, how they're the same. Um, what, what, you know, I didn't really talk a lot about how they're the same because I feel like there's a lot of things out there saying the water signs, this is how they are. But when we really break it down, I want people to understand how it's going to look different. So like if you're a sun in Cancer, but your Mars is in Pisces and you're... Saturn is in Cancer. What, what, um, Scorpio. Ooh, got all these water signs. We can use that. But we have to think and break down how it's going to look different and where your expression is going to be different, okay? Um, and so that was basically it. If you have any water signs in your chart, drop them below. I hope you got through this whole video. Or, you know, if not, you watched what part interests you. And um, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe.